um, slangs may change, but right. unfortunately a lot of things stay the same. And so, you know, the day you got people, they might say loud, some people might say right. kush, some people, you know, you got different names for, you know, spoken on Keisha. Right. Hey, that's a new one. You know, we're spoken on Keisha. You know what I'm saying? Right. But, you know, again, you got to understand where things come from to understand that it, it didn't just start yesterday. Right. So I want you to go into that so that people can understand yeah. this is wild style of crucial conflict. Right. And Brother Enoch. Man, without boundaries. Right, we just it. let it ride. Yeah. yeah, like we just said, like we had a number one song called Smoking on Hay. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We made that in the hood, next thing you know, it was blew up all over the world. On the set to me, I'ma see I rub your beat. In this session, manifesting on my beat skills. Never do, cause I refuse. Inhale, exhale, the smell. Smoking hay all by myself. Wild style, laugh and laugh. With my homies down my side. If some jump off, let and uh, that's what we was into. I was like 20 years old, that's what we were doing. You know, that's what everybody in the neighborhood was doing, but we named it Smoking On Hay as a metaphor, kind of like making our own terminology for it. You know, and, and, and we were saying Smoking On Hay in the middle of the barn. The barn was the name of our studio, you know what I'm saying? So we was telling you we were Smoking On Hay in the middle of the barn, you know what I'm saying, in our studio. But you know, everybody thought we were, you know, in a real bar. Yeah, yeah, no, nah, we yeah. weren't in no real bar. That's the name of our studio, and that's the vibe that we had. We kind of took, you know, we didn't want to rap regular and, and 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 come directly. We wanted to disguise it in like a metaphor right. instead of going directly out and saying something. Everything we did, we said it in the metaphor. Like we had songs like Showdown, like what we was trying to show that. Back in the days, in the, uh, in the Western, it's still the same way now. You got yeah. gunslingers, uh, good cops, bad cops, yeah. bandits, and you know, whorehouses, this, yeah, that, and the other. That. We just, just showing how it's still the same, you know what I'm saying? You know, because we watch Westerns and stuff coming up, right. and we seen shootings and killings, and we just related it to the street game bad yeah. stuff. You know what I'm saying? They glorify that. We ain't gonna have no. And we make a story about, you know, the good old gangbangers. Like they got the good old cowboys and the killers. It, it is so different. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. And we show movies about drug dealers. We can't, I mean, the drug dealers that's making money. When, when they was the uh, mob that did it, that owned all the buildings now and own it. So yeah. it's like we doing stuff that we learned from them, but. You know what I'm saying? At the same time, we, you know, you know, as a people, right. you know, it's hurting us when they did it to be successful and help. You know, they it, it changed around for their people, but yeah, we they, use it to hurt. Yeah, we use it to hurt our people. Like they put drugs in the hood. Mm -hmm. We all thinking we got keys and everything, but we getting our auntie or uncle strung out. Yeah. Or somebody mom and everything, we kill our people at the same time as we making money. Well, you know, the guy, I you know. remember the guy was like at the table and one of the dons, he smacked the table and said, don't put the drugs in our neighborhood. Right. Put it in the niggas' neighborhood. Put it in, right. Put you know it in their neighborhood. They're animals anyway. Right. <laughs> I also don't believe in drugs. For years, I paid my people extra so they wouldn't do that kind of business. Somebody comes to them and says, I have powders. If you put up three, four thousand dollar investment, we can make fifty thousand distributing. So they can't resist. I want to control it as a business to keep it respectable. I don't want it near schools. I don't want it sold to children. That's an infamia. In my city, we would keep the traffic in the dark, people, to call it. They're animals anyway, so let them move their souls. Okay, that was just a movie. People don't really feel like that. Right, right, right. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, 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 yeah, but you know, like I said, we done that. We made them records, and we tried to portray from the old to the beginning. And we had, you know, gangbang songs and everything. But we made this before we had a deal. It just, we got a deal. And it blew up. It exploded everywhere. So next thing you know, we had to travel around the world. And we figured out, we found out that the same Chicago gangs that we was rapping about was in every state. So 
every state. Right, it was in every state. So we couldn't be on the lot. I mean, it's like a lot of rappers talk they mess because they local and they don't have to travel. But when you got to travel around, now we doing shows and this 20,000 Crips and Bloods looking at us and mm -hmm. throwing they signs up mm -hmm. and they looking at us like, Ain't y'all no gang, you know what I'm saying? Vice Lords from Chicago or this, mm -hmm. that, and the other. They, they, they banging with us. They throwing our signs down. Mm -hmm. We had to, you know what I'm saying? Like, we, we had to really be about what we was on. Right. And, and, and by the grace of God, we made it back home. But it was like the movie <laughs> The Warriors. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, then we, we get to go into different neighborhoods, talk to other GDs from other states. But then they be real cool, and, 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 and then we, we figuring out like, man, look how the other brothers in different neighborhoods kicking. Right. Like, we, like we really was kind of cool with each other outside any title of it in the game. Cause mm -hmm. like I said, each one of us was from different, situ different street organizations and we came together to be one group when our different organizations was at war with each other. You know what I'm saying? So we kind of, kind of shocked everybody in our whole West Side by us becoming one group mm -hmm. and, 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 and coexisting. You know, making. What, what, what made that possible, though? I mean, what, what was it you that know, brought you all together? Look, I, we can rise above that because that that don't define us. Right, because we we noticed we all had talent, and we mm -hmm. and we became like we 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 became more brothers than a street organization because I'm going to be honest, we had to go do concerts in Chicago. Our neighborhood wouldn't even come because they thought the game was going to kill us. We had to go by ourselves. So we felt that we we had to be one besides right. being in the game. And we, we really wasn't representing that no more once we found out what, 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 you know, we had to be a man for ourselves. We just let it all go. You know what I'm saying? Because Ain't nobody gonna, the people you running with a gang with and all that, ain't nobody gonna write you. Ain't nobody gonna send you no money. It's real. Ain't nobody gonna, you know, uh, be there for you like your family gonna be there. You might be looking at your family like, uh, you know, y'all ain't my, this my family. No, right. your family is your family, your, yeah. your, your bloodline. And some friends and other mothers can be your family. Anybody that's telling you right for wrong or that's trying to give you good, God is not, you know, condemning you. You got to listen to him. Don't get caught up into all this um, uh, street gang stuff, street lawyers and all that. Mm -hmm. You be a drug dealer, somebody saying you got to be loyal to your gang, but then you mess up, they want to break your legs and shoot you or kill you. What type of loyalty is that? You know what I'm saying? What, what type, why you want to be, you know, well, we got told this. Right. We got told, we were shorty, you could go shoot somebody, you could go to the Idy home, you ain't gonna get time. Mm -hmm. You know, you got older people influencing young people and letting them do all this lunacy. That's why, you know, I seen the little videos that have been going around with the young rappers up little, in it, but I see grown people here. in the background too, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that ain't, that ain't telling them what the consequences is. BDK! 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 BDK. BDK. These niggas claim 300, but we BDK. You know, not telling them that they could get killed behind what they rapping about. Or the police can or the, the same right, video and the police. And then come raid right. your grandmama house yeah, because yeah, you yeah. did a video with a tech nine. Yeah, I mean, yeah, because now you got police three years old. They know what's going on. Yeah. But y'all feel that rapping about Y'all got this gun and that gun and showing them. You don't think they gonna come over there and try to look for them guns? You think they don't think y'all y'all think y'all think this just rap? They thinking like, oh, they selling keys, they got work. And you trying to rap about it and put it on camera because you think another big time rapper uh, done it and doing it. So you wanna put it on tape? You fooling yourself. It's like, that's like, you know what I'm saying? You get caught right, you dry snitching on yourself. But it's a lot of artists, they hear rappers, you know, you know, no disrespect, you know, it may be a song, but you hear rappers like Rick, Rick Ross and selling drugs on my iPhone. I'm smoking dope, I'm on my cell phone, I'm selling dope, straight off the iPhone, he want to quote, he talking about iPhone, they trying to do what they 
Top, they want to be like Lil Wayne, no disrespect. He a rich guy, but he got tattoos all over his face. But I see little guys in my hood with tattoos all over their face, and they ain't finished school, and they ain't got no job, and they think that they can just do it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then now, who you who gonna hire you with all these tattoos on your face? You think you're gonna fall back on drugs to sell drugs, and that's how you gonna live? That's what's gonna, I mean, how you gonna, you know, you ain't even finished school, but you got tattoos on your face. You don't got, a, you don't got the money that little Wayne ain't got. Ain't got the stick, ain't got the <laughs> talent, <laughs> right. or, or even the right. opportunity, because this person is functioning right. for the level. But that's his, know, yeah, that's, that's, his, his reality. Yeah, that's, that's his reality. But then, right. the reality is, my grandmama or my mom is taking care of me. Right. I don't have none of these things that these guys got. Right. And I'm a junior or a sophomore, maybe, in high school. Right. You know what I mean? I might have dropped out. Hey. You know, and, and maybe, you know, I might have a war, you know, yes, right sir. about now. So what we got to do now is this, because, see, we give them the history. We, that was the history, but, I, but I'm gonna tell you like this. Um, from the rap organization, from the, from a rap fan point of view, I, man, sometimes we get a bad rap. I'm gonna be honest, you know, a lot of people expect for the rappers to be, just because we're on the radio, they feel like we could be the voice to, to, for, for everything. And I don't think that's true because some of them, like you said, a lot of artists didn't go to school to be great oral speakers or even could, could teach they self. Right. You know, I feel a lot of people that's in the workforces that done got their education honestly what they want, what they propose to done, and they become lawyers and doctors and accountants and stuff. I think those same people got as much responsibility to come back to the neighborhood and teach kids about credit, about real estate and everything as much as rappers need to have a responsibility on what they uh, telling them to do because that's all they listen to but y'all not coming and voice what y'all could be doing you know or teaching them a way it's like fend for yourself i'm not gonna show you how to get money my money you know because you're in competition with me so i'm not teaching you about real estate i'm not teaching you how to manage money i'm not teaching you life skills I'm not teaching you these things, so they growing up, listen to music, you know what I'm saying, or other people that's bad influence, and they thinking that's the way, because ain't nobody uh, that's made it to another, made it in another uh, field coming back teaching. They leaving the neighborhoods, and they just let the neighborhood be the neighborhood, not knowing that these kids gonna grow up and be, be something that they, um, whatever their environment showing them. And then some make it out the cracks. Some got good households. Some got good role models or different people that can tell them different things to do. And they right. kind of pick it up from everybody. But, you know, some of those people are bad influences. So, so we, you know, so, we got a responsibility as a whole, so, not just the rappers. So, okay, so what we got to do when we come back, we got to deal with some of the teens are going to come in on this. You know, who should be the real voice? You know, who should be the real voice says. There ought to be one type of voice, but what is it that we should be putting our ears and our hearts to that can help us become responsible, able to be a man, to be a woman, to be responsible for our actions and do that, which will help our community right. be better. We'll be back. Legendary pioneer of hip hop, my man Wildstyle, NOC, aka Brother Enoch, Hip Hop Detox, AOG, DTD, all day at the Arkansas Saints Bank. I wonder if they gonna make it back. I wonder if we gonna get this call, that call, to come identify my brother or my sister in the morgue. I, I walk my little sister to school every day to cook. And I tell her I love her because I don't know whether she gonna make it back home or not. So like I said, man, this gun violence got to stop. We got to do something. That's what's up. When I say hip hop, you say detox. Hip hop. Detox. Hip hop. Detox. That's what's up. Talking about my boys and girls. Holy be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Earth as it is in heaven, give me this day my daily bread. Instead, Father's life in every bed.
young Tommy was a boy who was destined to shine. 14 years old, but he was in his prime. He played beat ball with the guys all the time. A dreams of going big, so he was on his grind. And he got so good, he was a starter. Now he's leaning in points and taking his team farther. But with all this, his life only got harder.